behave yourself, Jaws. Alexandrite is one of the rarest gemstones in the world. It is a color change variety of chrysoberyl. Alexandrite is much more rare than diamond, and because of its scarcity, alexandrite is much more valuable than diamonds, rubies, or emeralds of the same size. This piece of natural alexandrite rough came from Brazil, and this video should be fun as this is my first attempt at cutting alexandrite. At first I was a little nervous about trying this rare gemstone, but then I figured, what the heck, if I goof up, Bopa gets a small vial of alexandrite dust as a present for her next birthday. Sounds even better than the lump of coal she gave me last Christmas. So. As I said, alexandrite is a color change gemstone. The primary color is shown under natural light, such as daylight or fluorescent light. Under natural light, alexandrite will look green. There are a number of variations of green color that alexandrite could look, such as bluish green, yellow green, or brownish green. To observe the color change of alexandrite, you then need to examine the stone under incandescent light, which is candlelight or pen light. Alexandrite should change color to a purple or a similar color such as reddish purple, pinkish purple, brownish purple. In some cases, the color may change from green to red, orange, or pink instead of purple or purplish. I hope you can see on my not so good quality camera and my bottom of the line flashlight that the color of this alexandrite changes from a bright light green to a pastel velvet violet blue. Alexandrite has often been called an emerald by day and ruby by night because of its chameleon-like color shift. And this color change is a result of its uncommon chemical composition which includes traces of chromium which is the same coloring agent found in emerald. The unlikelihood of these elements combining in nature under the right conditions makes alexandrite one of the rarest and most expensive gemstones on earth. Alexandrite has been associated with concentration and learning and is believed to strengthen intuition, aid creativity, and inspire imagination. Alexandrite is also said to bring good omens to anyone who wears it. Alexandrite is a relatively modern gemstone discovered in Russian emerald mines located in the Ural Mountains. And the story is that Alexandrite was discovered in 1834 on the same day that future Russian Tsar Alexander II came of age. And so this gemstone was named to honor him. The Alexandrite mine from Russia's famed deposits set the quality standard for this gemstone. It was 150 years after the Russian deposits of Alexandrite were first discovered, and long after they were mined out, before Alexandrite was found anywhere else on Earth. It was Brazil where Alexandrite was found next in 1987. Since then, Alexandrite has been found in Sri Lanka and also in East Africa. On the Mohs scale, alexandrite has a hardness of 8.5, so that puts alexandrite in between uh, ruby sapphire and garnet. It's not quite as hard as corundum, which is what ruby and sapphires are, but it's a little bit harder than garnet. To cut this alexandrite, I took a standard round brilliant design. All I did was adjust the angles of the facets based on the refractive index of alexandrite, which is 1.746 to 1.763. And even though I'm using unique angles to cut this round design, I do not consider this my own design. And I'd like to give a quick shout out to Robert Strickland and his GemCAD software, which is available online, and him showing me how to take the gem cutting design and adjust the angle based on different refractive indexes. If you're interested in creating gem designs and adjusting facet angles, take a look at GemCAD by Robert Strickland. Thanks again, Robert. If you do create a super design and you need a test cut in, in that gem, just let me know. Now the refractive index is defined as the difference between the speed of light in a vacuum and the speed of light in a gemstone. As light passes through a gemstone, it slows down because the gemstone is denser than air. And this causes the path of the light to change. And refraction is the bending of light as it passes in or out of a gem. 
The angles that you cut the facets in a gemstone affect how light will bounce back when the light hits the facet. When you cut the stone at the correct angles for its refractive index, light will pass into the top or the crown part of our little alexandrite, pass through the stone, hit a facet in the bottom or the pavilion side of our stone, and bounce back through the stone again and come back out of the crown and, and give a little sparkle right into our eyes. And this sparkle is what's called brilliance. Uh, final word on buying alexandrite. There's a lot of synthetic alexandrite out there being sold as natural. Be careful. A lot of it is just simply color change cubic zirconium. Cubic zirconium is not a natural gemstone and it's not very valuable. When I was stationed in Afghanistan, I saw a lot of gem dealers there trying to sell this fake alexandrite to members of all the nations who were working in Afghanistan, not just to Americans. Some uh, synthetic alexandrite is actually lab-created corundum, which is, again, ruby or sapphire, and other minerals added to get the color change. Uh, this is not the same mineral as alexandrite. Again, alexandrite is a variety of crystal barrel, not corundum. So lab-created corundum is not the same as alexandrite. And although lab-created corundum is probably 20 or 30 times more valuable than cubic zirconium being sold as alexandrite, it's still not alexandrite. And then the final synthetic is there is some actual lab-created alexandrite out there. There are a few companies, very few, who grow real alexandrite in a laboratory. Now one such company is Chatham, and they're wonderful people. Uh, they're producing lab-created alexandrite, which actually is alexandrite, just created in a lab. Although the lab-created alexandrite is a lot cheaper than natural alexandrite not created in a lab, uh, the lab-created alexandrite is many times more expensive than lab-created corundum. So, given the range of alexandrite available on the market and the synthetics, if you find a great deal from anyone trying to sell you something as alexandrite, my recommendation is to have it tested by a reputable gem testing lab, such as the American Gem Trade Association, AGTA, to ensure that it's alexandrite. Okay, this is alexandrite. I'm going to cut with a 1200 crystal light disc. It's a small stone, so we don't need to do much other preforming. First angle is 48 degrees. Okay, after using the 1200 diamond grit crystal light, we've gone to the 3000 grit diamond on a uh, bat lap by using uh, gear looses pandemonium 3000 grit kind of looks like chapstick when you put it on and i like using this because you can use it with water instead of oil so we're going to continue with the pavilion on the 3000 grit and then we'll switch to a 14,000 diamond grit and then a final polish with the 60,000 diamond grit all on a bat lap okay for our alexandrite we finished pre-polishing with the 3000 uh, pandemonium diamond grit on a bat lap and now we're going to use a uh, bat lap with 14,000 diamond grit and then a final polish with a 60,000 diamond grit. A lot of cutters stop polishing at the 14,000 mark and they claim you can't tell the difference so but I go to the 60,000 diamond grit. So the way we charge the lap is uh, this pandemonium diamond mixed in with a uh, kind of like chapstick looking stuff. Work it in all the way around so the, the stone won't hit a little mound of diamond grit. And we'll continue to cut the pavilion with our 14,000 diamond grit. We've switched to a 60,000 diamond grit bat lap and we're gonna charge it up before we start our final polish. Sometimes a 14,000 diamond grit will leave no, not a scratch, but a little groove on the facet. Can't really notice it unless you're looking with the 10 times magnification or 20 times magnification loop. Those grooves aren't a real big problem, but the 60,000 diamond grit will certainly get rid of that. So this will be our final polish on the pavilion of our Alexandrite. So we've got it set up for the dial indicator of three, and our angle is gonna be 42.1 degrees. And then we'll be done with the pavilion and we'll transfer it to the crown. All right, with our alexandrite, we're going to transfer it from the uh, pavilion to the crown. So I've put the dop in our transfer jig and tightened down the, uh, the first dop, the dop that we is already glued. And now the other dop, we're going to open it up a little bit, separate the distance. 
we're gonna have it facing up and we're gonna put a drop of uh, adhesive right in the cone of this top because we just cut our pavilion and our pavilion has a kind of like a teepee point. Um, it fits for the other side and when we transfer the top to put a cone shaped top in it. The top top, when we first started, we just ground a flat piece on the stone. So that top is a flat. So we're gonna put a drop of our Loctite 404 super glue. I'm perfectly fine with using super glue or two-part epoxy. However, for very small stones like this, super glue just seems to work better. Put a drop there. Push the top together, tighten them up, and move it around a little bit so that our super glue sets very quickly, but sets on the stone and the top. We don't want it falling off when we, when we cut our crown. So we'll let that set and then we'll be ready to cut the second half of our Alexandrite. We've finished letting the super glue harden. Now we're gonna remove the dot from the top part of the stone and then we'll be ready to cut the crown. Now we'll clean that up a little bit by pulling the uh, rest of the super glue off. And now we're ready to work on the top part crown of our Alexandrite. Okay, so now we need to make sure the crown and the pavilion are in line. And the way you do that is by using your girdle facets. So our girdle facets were cut with the 96 index starting with the index of three. So you put it on the index of three, 90 degrees, I use this perfectly flat, trued up piece of metal and another piece of metal on top. And then you're just looking so that that girdle with the index of three should be perfectly flat with the lap. And since it's with the lap, you use these to extend it up, these pieces of metal. So as you bring the arm down, you're looking to ensure that that number three index is perfectly flat and it hits your metal. In this case, it's off a little bit. So I haven't locked in the dop, so I can move it a little bit. And I move it just enough to make sure that girdle facet is flat against that piece of metal. And once I have it, I can lock in the dop. Then I double check it, just make sure it didn't move while I was adjusting, tightening that dop. And I go somewhere else on the uh, girdle to check in another spot just for fun, uh, just to make sure. So. The 3 and the 51 uh, index all were cut with the girdle, so the 51 index should also be perfectly flat, and it is. So the first cut of our crown is with the number 3 index at a uh, 44 degree angle. So we set our hard stop, our indicator at 44. And if we don't have it, the top and the bottom perfectly aligned, when I start making this cut, the bottom part of the girdle will show flat and the top will come down not flat. So you'll know you're out of alignment there also. That's the second way to check it. So the top part as we cut the girdle down with this 44 degree angle and the three should come straight down to where we want to set the width of the girdle, which is at a 0.3 millimeter at the most. And so just, this is such a small stone, it could be, it could be less. So for Alexandrite, there's not a whole lot of stone left to work on the, on the crown or the top half. So I'm going to start with a 1200 crystallite. I don't think I need the 600 because there's not a whole lot of material to move anyway. So I set the, uh, the mast so that I have a workspace of about this far. I can start my water drip, make sure the... Uh, lap has water on it and that uh, reduces the friction and the heat on the stone. Now I move the stone down until it just touches the lap and you know that when the indicator moves. So we're on the stone so we back it up till it's just above the stone and if you move it back and forth you can feel there's no contact between the stone and the lap and that's when you're ready to start. So what I want to check for is to make sure we're in alignment between the top and the bottom as we cut the girdle down, making sure the line is 
straight across that girdle, and it is, and we're ready to, uh, to work on our first set of facets on the crown for this uh, Alexandrite. Okay, we've finished cutting the first set of tiers on the crown, first set of facets with the uh, 1200 crystal light. Now I'm going to use 3000 diamond grit on a bat lap, and then I'll use 14,000 diamond, and then 60,000 diamond to polish it up. There's a real slow drip. Start with our number three index. Again, it's on a 44 degree angle for the first set of facets. So we bring the arm down until it just touches and bring it back up and we're ready. We just want to take a little bit off with our 3000 grit diamond. Take some of the scratches out from the 1200 and we'll take the 3000 scratches out with our 14,000. Okay, we're ready to go around this set of facets with our 3000 grit diamond. Okay, just finished polishing the table of our Alexandrite. And clean up the 60,000 grit lap. Um, what I do is get a piece of paper towel, a little bit of alcohol, and run it across the lap. And the next time I use the lap, I'll put on some fresh diamond grit, but you can see some of the, the black in the diamond grit that's from the stone. We take the stone and the dop out of our table adapter. And the way this table adapter works, the 45 degree angle of the Ultratec and the 45 degree of the table adapter give you a 90 degree angle, which allows you to cut a flat table. Now we have color change, Alexandrite from a green to a purple. I'll soak it in acetone to get rid of the super glue. And then when it comes out, we'll weigh it and measure it and send it to Bopi. Thank you everyone and happy fasting.